look around. Yeah. They're not yeah. too cheap. You don't want them from You don't want them. Okay, uh, welcome to the uh, special meeting at 6 o'clock for May 14th, and we're going to discuss the uh, Recreation Center Somatic Design Study. Can I roll call, please? Three council members are present. Council member Oliva is excused, and council member Pappen is running a few minutes late. Yeah, it's our famous... Uh, Bay Area traffic, so um, thank you. All right, so do we have a report from staff? Thank you from our deputy uh, deputy city manager. What? Thank you. Oh, no, we're doing that next the next session. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to present Andrea from Group 4 Consulting, who will guide you through this process. Um, later on this evening, you'll be approving the... Well, We'll be hearing the conceptual design, or hopefully approving the conceptual design report. The next phase is schematic design, and we'll be having two sessions like this to look at some of the um, project components in a little bit more detail. So, Andrea will lead you through that process, and happy to take any questions as we go through it. Welcome, Andrea. Uh, thank you. It's good to be back. Um, excuse my voice. I'm just getting over a sore throat. But... Um, so tonight, a uh, quick agenda for tonight, uh, review the project work plan. As Deanna mentioned, we are in the schematic design phase, um, and so we're going to do a quick recap of the conceptual design recommendation, which uh, the council approved uh, when I was last here. Uh, an update on the floor plan. Uh, we have options for an exterior material palette that we'd love to get input um, from the council tonight, uh, and then review the site plan and some of the other landscape features uh, as part of the uh, schematic design, uh, and then recap with next steps. Um, so we're currently um, past the conceptual design. You'll be re reviewing and re hopefully approving that report. Um, but we are progressing forward, moving through uh, schematic design and ongoing uh, working simultaneously through various funding and implementation strategies. And the schematic design should phase should last approximately four to five months. Um, uh, the council previously provided direction on the design option for the park lantern design, and so that is what we'll be reviewing and working through this evening. Uh, so you can see the the renderings uh, per the conceptual design report uh, up on the screen here. Um, and just a quick recap of the building program, um, just to remember, uh, we have, of course, an entry lobby, community lounge, a dedicated senior lounge, uh, two classrooms, two preschool classrooms, a community room that is divisible and can seat uh, up to three to 500 seats, uh, an, a commercial kitchen that supports the community room events, a fitness studio, game room, a dedicated art room, uh, various conference rooms, vending and refreshments, uh, and of course staff and support to run and operate the facility. And we're looking at roughly uh, 25,900 square foot facility that is uh, two stories. Um, up on the screen here is the first floor, and so the main entrance as you come in is the lobby and lounge with uh, the reception that's immediately uh, in front of all of the building support and staff workroom and an adjacent conference room that can be shared both by staff and the public. Uh, just directly off the lobby and the lounge is the game room, and adjacent to that is the fitness and wellness studio. Um, across the hall from that is our preschool classroom suite. So there's two classrooms there with an office, rest area, and associated prep storage and restrooms for the preschool uh, program. And then at the end of uh, the gallery is our large community room um, that is illustrated here divisible by three and is supported by various uh, storage rooms, kitchen, alcoves, and uh, ki a commercial uh, catering kitchen. And then uh, I highlighted in gray are the other building supports such as electrical rooms, mechanical rooms, um, various restrooms for men's, women's, as well as family. Uh, and additional park restrooms to support the park. Um, and an additional after our entrance for programs and events that are happening in the community room when the rest of the community center might be um, closed. Uh, 
Up on the second floor, as you ascend either via elevator or stair, is uh, another conference room, uh, the art classroom, the dedicated senior lounge and accompanying kitchenette, uh, a, a larger, more boardroom style conference room, and then at the end of the gallery are two classrooms that are again divisible, so it could be one large uh, classroom or two smaller classrooms, and it's associated support spaces, uh, including restrooms and building support. And of course, um, an outdoor deck that faces the paseo. Um, as you recall, we are really thinking about how the library is going to run on day-to-day -day operations. So we have those high activity levels located on the first floor, which include the lobby, the teen and game room, fitness and wellness studio, the preschool classrooms and the community room, um, and wanted to be sensitive that we understand those are, that's going to be a very active floor. Uh, and then that we see more moderate activity up on the second floor, so a little quieter um, up there with the senior lounge, conference rooms, the arts and classrooms, and and uh, the, the two uh, shared classrooms. And so really thinking about the acoustics and making sure we're zoning the, the, uh, the recreation facility appropriately for the various users that will be there. Um, and again, just to highlight some of the amenities up on the second floor, um, a, a number of great views out of all of these rooms, and especially when we think about the arts and crafts classroom, having the capability of having nice northern light to support painting and other fine art programs. Um, and then, as always, as was required, um, there will be access via an elevator to the second floor, as well as areas within the stairs um, and space for refuge in case of emergencies um, or other means of evacuation. So we're going to jump quickly in, if there's no questions, um, into the exterior material, material different options. Um, that's really where we would like to get the most feedback from you guys, uh, from the council this evening. And so we have three options to share with you. And so here we're illustrating the various materials and where they'll be placed. Um, this is just a single uh, front elevation as you come into the parking lot. This is that main uh, elevation as you enter in the facility. And so you can see there are uh, a variety of different materials being used. Um, we have glass with their metal uh, mullions, um, a wood look soffit on the underside of the roof, um, accent stone um, in that vertical orange area, um, and then two colors of what we're calling EFIS, which is just an exterior uh, insulated finish system, which basically is what would look like, a, like stucco, uh, if you were to think of it like that. Um, and so there are two different colors there to help break up the massing and provide a variety of finishes and colors throughout the building. And so the first option that we have here um, is, we're gonna have Deanna pass out the samples so you can see them in person illustrated here. So we're looking at um, a variety of different stones and the first stone that we wanted to look at was, um, this is a locally sourced stone within 500 mile radius. It comes out of Las Vegas. Um, it is um, a natural stone that is mined and curry curried out of that uh, Vegas area. And the stone comes in a variety of heights and lengths, um, anywhere from two inches to four inches up to six inches. And the maximum length is 24 inches and the minimum length is six inches. So you can get a variety of heights and lengths within this material. And one of the things that we heard was that there was um, a desire to complement the brick, but without using brick, have, find a stone that might work well with the existing brick that in the other civic facilities. And so this was a stone that's not only locally sourced, but we think works well with the brick here at uh, the City Hall, as well as the library. So it picks up the red tones, a little bit of the orange and cream tones, um, and really complements those different materials uh, within the civic campus. Uh, and then we're balancing that, or contrasting that with uh, two tones of ephus, lighter color ephus on the main two-story volumes, and then a slightly darker um, ephus color and a nice warm gray um, on the lower level here. And then again, picking up uh, the wood tones on the soffit on the underside of the roof. Um, and so the three materials there. So this is option one, Gina. You're just catching up. Thank you. So she just started showing these. 
Uh, the second option that we have here has um, a different type of stone. This is a panelized stone system. So the, the stone comes in about one to two inches nominal height in various lengths, but it is panelized or somewhat tiled um, in its use. And so it has a different scale. Um, the longest stone is more 12 to 18 inches and goes down to six inches, but the height of the stone is set at about one to two inches in height um, and it is a, a contrast to the red here so here we're looking at bringing in a, a cool kind of gray color uh, and then contrasting that by bringing in the red tone in the ephus so accenting that with red uh, as well as a neutral tone um, so it has a little bit more of a darker feel and potentially uh, slightly more modern in its approach. Um, and within option two, we thought about accenting the, the gray stone with either a warm red color like brick, the, the brick tone that you see here, or in a kind of a blue green color. Um, so those are two variations within the stone option of either red or accenting it with a greenish tone. Uh, and the third option that we're looking at is similar to the previous one in gray, but again, to try to find something that was in, uh, has a more warmer feel. Um, doesn't quite have as much red as the first one, but does have slight red undertones mixed with grays and cream colors. Um, and again, accenting that with a light ephus color and the two-story volume. And in this one, uh, a lighter greenish color um, for the accent, or additionally just picking up more of the brown tones. And so again, there's two different accent ephas that we're using here. Um, this is again, similar to the first one, the stone comes in about one to two inches in height and ranges anywhere from six to 18 inches in length. Um, the option two and option three stone are not locally sourced, um, but um, great options nonetheless. So just to point out. Um, they're manufactured in the Midwest, I believe. So, um, and then sent over here. So they're uh, a synthetic kind of stone. It's, they're not a real natural quarried stone. So, uh, have a little bit more of a residential feel in their scale, um, as opposed to option one, because it comes in a variety of heights of two, four, six inches, and everywhere up to 24 inches, you can get a slightly larger scale in that, in those, in that stone. Uh, the option two and three are kind of a smaller scale stone. And so those are the three different options that we have shared with you this evening. And we'd we'll love to get uh, feedback on preferences or um, what we're liking and not liking about the various options. Questions, comments? Council Warren. Did you have, did you want to start off? I, I need a little more thinking time, but um, compared to the three different types, are they in the same price? Area? Yes, all of the stones presented are within the cost per square foot that we have allocated in the current cost model. Okay, and just to make sure I've caught this, the first option, the one that has the golden, golden red stone, is fairly local. So it's got a shorter shipping distance. Yes, it's within... Uh, greener that way. Yes. Um, what's defined as local in uh, green standards is within 500 miles. And so it's just within 500 miles of uh, the site. And so that so helps us get points if we were going If for we were to class. go for lead, that they consider anything within 500 miles a local material. And so that this the stone would contribute to that in option... The stone presented in option one. Option two and three do not provide that... Uh, benefit. How would this, how would the links um, that are pre uh, dictation over just comes out in various lengths. So anywhere from six to 18 inches. Would lean towards a richer picture. I don't know where we get red from though in some of the so those are my thoughts as we lead into this. I, I, it's too bad. I think when you get a bigger cut of stone, I think it looks richer um, as well. But um, you're saying that that doesn't really happen with this other option. So interesting as we go along here. Anyway, preliminarily, those are my thoughts. Thank you.
I, I uh, prefer option one exterior. Like it's a more earth tone, colorish, uh, a little bit. And plus, the fact that it's locally sourced makes it a plus. Um, but I think it gives it more richness, at the same time, gives us some warmth. And one thing to know um, as regard to the color variation with the stone, could it work with the quarry to try to um, limit the amount of variation in color if that was desired? We've previously done that on other projects where you can... Uh, Actually, I, I like the variation so. because um, everything else is starting looking, you know, you have big slabs of color. Something that has variation of color actually adds some interest to the building. Um, Council Schneider. I agree with uh, Vice Mayor Holliber about the the white part, and I'm looking at the other colors, and the red would be too red, obviously, from the other options with that one, and wondering if the version that we're seeing, because I like the redstone, I like that it's natural, I like that it's local, and it'll give us those points even if we don't go for the full lead certification. But what if we put so that the darker, the, the, the FS1 that's kind of a gray mm -hmm. flipped over, I kind of like the, the blue-green, but I see how well that works with the dark gray stone. Yeah. So I was looking at the other one, just wondering if there was something else a little bit darker Oh, yes, yeah, something, but with the, the natural stone. Yeah. yeah, I think there's opportunities to uh, play with the EFIS colors because that is basically um, any paint in the world, so there's lots of options out there. So if, um, if everyone... So if we didn't decide that tonight, you could still go forward with the process... Um, as long as you know which stone we're choosing. Yes, if we could, if we have a direction or a narrow down of a, a stone, we could come back with two different variations of of different EFIS colors and option accents of that as well. Okay. At the meeting that we're scheduled in, I believe June. Question then, since I appear to be in the minority <laughs> here, I'd like to see what the um, Option one stone is if it were less colorful and larger, mm -hmm. about as large as you can get, to see what um, presentation that would make on the building. Yeah, so I we think can. That would be very curious mm -hmm. as we move forward here. Yeah, we can definitely um, have samples brought in at uh, the two, four, and six inch heights, and the largest piece is 24 inches long. So. And, and could we see a rendering of that? Mm -hmm. With the various heights yes, as well. That, that yes. would be. This is rendering um, the small two-inch height, but again... I'd like to see the biggest you Biggest can. we can do. I think I would agree with that. I'd like to see a larger... I think it would, if, if the desire is to simulate or work with brick, brick is generally more in a four- or six-inch height, so that might help tie um, these, two, these facilities together as a campus. And then we can bring the, the range of colors and talk about if there's, if there's a limitation of that or if we want to embrace the variety of colors or try to define it slightly more. The, if we're headed down that path, I would like to see a smoother transition then in whatever the Ephesus are. Okay. Um, they seem pretty stark. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's more of a community building, I think flow somewhat in the color spectrum and not just isn't it better to your color as far as greenhouse that um, we tend to uh, I don't know what the preferred maybe Ms. Schneider knows but it's another form of asphalt but it's red okay yeah and you see it everywhere from Alice Springs all the way out to the coast uh planting to help soften the entrance. Uh, we, of course, want to make sure we have the appropriate wind protection for those uh, entering into the facility, uh, parking for bicycles, as well as making sure we have a good connect inserted into the ground and then covered when not used. And so we might want to install mm -hmm. something to help support stations that are a little bit more sturdy than I think ease of issues with tipping and wind. Mm -hmm. And if how, again, you are hanging or placing the artwork, whether it's uh, 2D or 3D. Great, thank you. Yeah. Don't have a lot of maintenance and don't get hot. I, I think if there were... Uh, right. So, 
um, I, yeah, I was trying to figure out where where we have the stage on the inside, a, a platform within the community room. Uh, there's opportunities to bring in a portable stage. We were to treat the terrace as a stage. Size of the basin, uh, the bioswale stormwater basin, is dictated by the amount of water that's coming off of the roof. So um, we can't just reduce it to any length or size that we would need, but we could relocate it or help move that into a different area. Or so build. We'd have to come back and try to figure out if we're not treating it here, where are we going to treat that water? Uh, maybe, or the other option is, is, is there a, 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 a kind of area that provides kind of a, neither, you know, slope into or a flat area where we can put seating? Or you're, do you think on the east side, so going down towards Palm Avenue, so the opposite side of where the room is, right. bring the hill up a little bit there, just grade it up a little bit? Yeah. Well, the park master plan does have sort of an informal amphitheater yes. along the slope. Opposite side. Um, farther down. Of the, yeah, but I mean, it's back. better when you can have an indoor. That way, you, you know, when you have costumes and equipment and stuff like that, you can still be covered a bit and store your equipment having to haul it outside you know it's just i mean this is if you go to san mateo's uh, uh -huh. rec center they can open up the stage open up both sides so then they can have outdoor theater Where, so it doubles one the one in uh, central park it's washington you know next to the baseball diamond yeah i'm I, the, I, uh, recreation I center yeah go there and you'll see that uh, that they open up the the rec center uh, back of the stage and they open it up and then to they the put back. seating outside um, so it can double as a so I'm not saying put a stage there but it can all, it can automatically be a stage once you open it up um, so you can get double use out of that out of that space yeah and I was just trying to go back I the the basin doesn't extend all the way but we do have an existing tree that we're avoiding here and so maybe there's opportunities more the northern mm. edge um, to accomplish something like that. Um, but to note, the, recall that the playground uh, is just adjacent to that, so there would be limited lengths of where we could provide seating before we then hit the playground area. If I'm understanding correctly, the audience you're saying is down here, correct? Uh, well, I, I just, I just want to use most, yeah, that, yeah. use, use uh, double the use. Double of use, the use of that terrace. Right. So um, rather than just being a con place to congregate, people can use it as a, uh, a stage for performances, mm -hmm. and it'd be pretty nice. So, um, and then, or weddings or whatever, outdoor wedding, and if there was opportunity to put seating outside, um, if, yeah. So neither we build like you keep the swell and you build a bridge over it and then you have a flat area or you move the swell out further out or something um, to provide some space for seating. Okay. Let yeah. us look at that and see what we can come back with as far as the outdoor performance area. And question, Mr. Mayor? Yes. So your outside patio there really seems to narrow at the... Um, southern end there a lot um why is that that we're doing that I mean, um really well we were to... trying to be able to secure the patio so it wouldn't so in the evenings you can see a small sort of gated area or per area where you could sort of close that area off so it wouldn't be somewhere where someone would try to uh make a home in the evening, I guess, so to speak. Um, so we were trying to just make sure that that patio was secure and delineated so that it was clearly working within the community room and not a space that anyone would sort of walk into unless they were coming and using it in conjunction with the community room. So it's not a terrace that's like a park amenity, but it's an amenity for the community center and recreation center, sorry. And so we're just trying to delineate and define that. Um, yeah, I, I understand the thought process. I still would like to maximize enough of mm -hmm. number five there, as noted, so that we're not, um, it just becomes more utilitarian I guess the bigger it is there I yes. think we can figure out security in another way yep. somehow there and also are we putting in something we had discussed some sort of a um, heating element like a fire pit or something 
Um, yes, there's been the different things that we've been discussing, and I think will be something we'll bring back at the next meeting. Okay, so my, my concern would be is the current rendition is presented there. It goes off a little too narrow towards the end there. Right. And this is our maximum entertainment feature. <laughs> yeah. So I would hope that we can maximize that. Thank you. Great. Okay, um, so we have um, the Mills Dragon team out there going to perform for us for the next uh, meeting. So um, can we continue this discussion to the next, uh, Don't uh, they need the next me meeting this uh, it's evening? It's 6.53. It's not need set up. I know we're getting close. So we need, yeah. well, how much more do we have? Uh, I, we're getting very close to then, just a handful of slides. Okay. So, um, I, I think moving on just into looking at some of the site furnishings. Uh, so we're looking at new benches, uh, similar in a style or material to the recreation center. Um, some curvilinear benches for social area gathering and those feature areas, and then more of your traditional straight bench for your general purpose areas. Uh, and then looking at uh, bike racks, again, that are circular in form to respond to that arching and curvilinear landscape features that we have. And as far as the material of wood, uh, we can come back and address whether that is uh, a sustainably harvest wood or whether that's uh, simulated wood. Uh, when we look at planting, again, California native and climate appropriate planting, uh, looking at massing of plants with structures uh, closer to the buildings, um, habitat friendly with seasonal color, uh, low maintenance, low water use, um, and some textured planting along Lincoln Circle and the Taylor Middle School. Uh, and then of course, shaded parking a lot with uh, wind buffering, to provide wind buffering. Um, when we look at the planting in the tre rainwater treatment areas, um, so again, want to make sure it's a green and attractive planting. Um, there is an opportunity potentially for art in, in those areas, uh, a medium amount of maintenance and water use and bioretention at uh, grade plantings, as well as the potential for educational engagement within those areas to help demonstrate and explain uh, what the bio swales are doing and how they're uh, retaining and clarify, clearing the water. Um, as we presented a variety of trees, um, we shared two trees. Uh, the staff had a preference for using the Chinese elm. This is the specimen tree that we were talking about um, at the central courtyard, just outside of the community room. And so this was uh, the staff preferred uh, scheme. The other one that we had shared with them is a su su southern live oak. And then as we look at the variety of other trees within the site, um, again, a variety of shapes and forms and color to help bring uh, seasonal change to the site. So these are sampling of the trees and that we'll come back with exactly where these trees are planted uh, later. I can't remember where I was, but somebody was going, um uh, talking about manzanitas, and I admit to liking manzanitas because they can get very sculpture, and they've got that red bark mm -hmm. that may complement the stone. So I don't know if you want to think about some manzanita, and I've told the city manager this. The airport has been doing a lot of building and putting in some drought-tolerant landscapings, and then when I was there at a training a month ago, there were uh, tulips and other bulb, things that we wouldn't think of as drought tolerant, but they pop through for that splash of color. And it was really lovely. So it's kind of a little bit of the drought tolerant, but when the rain's falling, why not get some, some bulbs in there? And then they die back by the time we don't need to water anymore. Okay. So go, go on, look at their new, um, it's their new staff where their noise office is. Okay. And, but it's that we actually saw it quite a few different places around the airport and really stunning looking. Great, now we'll share that. Um, and then as we look at um, other planting, uh, landscape planting in the area, again, just a variety of textures, colors, um, formal and more informal types of plantings. Again, we'll come back at the next meeting with a planting plan that illustrates uh, where each one of these uh, plants and trees will be. But this is just uh, the palette that our landscape architect will be using. Can you throw one more in there? Yeah. Ceanothus. Okay. Really great for bees, purple flowers. Mm -hmm. This has been a great year for Ceanothus, but again, another California native, multiple species. Great. We'll add that to the list. 
And then again, so just wrapping up, if there's no other comments, uh, we'll be presenting to the Planning Commission as well as the Parks and Recs Commission uh, in June, and then coming back for our second uh, City Council design session in early July, where we will share updated site and building design, as well as start reviewing some of the interior finishes and layouts of the building. So, a lot happening. Great. Okay. Just in time. Great, thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a quick break and we assemble outside for performance by the Mills Dragon Team in celebration of uh, Asian Herit uh, Heritage Awareness Month. Um, so everybody's welcome to go outside and, and uh, enjoy the uh, entertainment. And we'll reconvene soon after that.
Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you for attending the uh, May 14th um, meeting of the City Millbury City Council. Can I have roll call please? Four council members are present. Council member Oliva is excused. Okay, thank you. Um, and Councilwoman Oliva sends her deepest regrets. She wanted to be here for uh, all the ceremony. So can I, um, Kelly, president of the Mill, Mill High School student body to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mark. I just uh, just want to give a few shout outs to Mark. He did a phenomenal job this year leading the leadership in Mills High School. Congratulations. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Let's see, we have the first order of business. We have, uh, we want to recognize the art show winners. And I also like to uh, also give a shout out to Councilwoman Schneider who uh, shepherded this project. Uh, this project was dormant for a long time and Councilwoman Schneider brought it back. And um, it's, it's something that we sorely really needed um, to show and have the, our, our residents able to express their abilities in art and their, and their special uh, specialties and their, uh, then their, uh, uh, and they're uh, well, I'm missing the words, but <laughs> skill sets. Skill sets. Well, it's more than that. Just talents. Yes, talents. So um, let's see. We have uh, three or four art pieces here, and uh, of course uh, there were many, and they were very difficult to choose. I went to the art show, and it was very difficult, uh, uh, you know, choices to make. But uh, the judges somehow did it. So I would like to ask uh, Eleanor Somoza, Faith Lee. Um, Emmy Lee Wan and Gwyneth Zhang up to the podium, please. Mr. Mayor, one more. Do we have accommodations for them, or? Yeah, where are they? they're in here. All right. All right. Okay. So can I have uh, Brian Chan, Mark uh, Schaffholder, Isaac Leon? Is that right? Schaffholder. Sorry, the uh, the beast, right? <laughs> beast and the, the beast and Beauty and the Beast. Awesome. <laughs> Cyrus Leon, um, uh, up to the podium for me. Thanks. Come on up, come on up. Oh, come on up. All right, so um, as I mentioned outside, the uh, Mills uh, Dragon team and Mr. Phillips, could you come up here too, Mr. Phillips? Mr. Yes, all, I know Mr. Phillips is very modest. He, he, he likes to celebrate the students, which is awesome. But I think, there's, I think, there's, I think we also like to acknowledge Mr. Phillips for, for helping make this possible. <laughs> 
So Mr. Phillips and, uh, and other parent leaders have uh, shepherded this team for many, many years. And can you tell us a little bit about the, the dragons? Anybody want to tell us a little oh, bit about yeah, dragons? I'll, I'll do that. Sure. So a brief history. Oh, um, yourself, um, hello, I'm Brian. <laughs> a brief history. A dragon team was founded 21 years ago. For the last 20 years, uh, we've participated in the SF Lunar Parade. Uh, we've placed first and second this this past year, we placed first in our specialty division. Um, the dragon is uh, 111 feet long, and we have 67 members. All of our coaches, except Mr. Lee, are past and former participants of Dragon Team. Cyrus here is a former uh, Dragon Team participant, and he's our coach right now. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Lee, for having us. Different, different Mr. Lee. <laughs> Okay, so if, uh, again, uh, this again, hearty congratulations, and is you guys um, also help us celebrate the uh, uh, our our our, um, our adopted uh, unit, the 101st Screaming Eagles, and they were very thrilled by that. So thank you for doing that. Um, and you guys are quite a quite a treasure for Millbrae. So uh, thank. I hope you keep participating. Some of you who are graduating, and uh, thank you for coming back. Um, and again, this is, this is quite an honor for Millbrae to have a uh, award-winning Dragon team. So if we can get a picture in front here, that'd be awesome. So that dragon head, understand, is uh, every year is you know, refurbished or redone. So they, the kids do that themselves. They didn't buy it off the shelf. So uh, if you wanted that dragon head, uh, I would take. I would take it. Okay. So we have a proclamation for uh, National Public Works. Key Lim is the director of public works and also our deputy uh, city manager. Um, and Key um, is going to represent uh, all the hardworking men and women who uh, ensures that our sewers are not, <laughs> and that our water is running, uh, and you get uh, and you, so you can flush your toilet and have water for food and substance, um, and also make sure that our roads are um, are are paved and ensure that the water flows and uh, storm drains are unclogged and traffic signals and a lot of things that we take for granted every day is not glorious it's not sexy but it makes the city uh, it makes the city very vibrant and it makes our city special because um, all little things including making sure cleaning downtown and street sweeping and making it very uh, uh, friendly to visitors and residents is all due to the hard work of public works um, and I especially appreciated it because when I was last time mayor there were eight water main breaks and uh, they worked tirelessly for two days to fix all those water mains so that people can get water in their houses and I just want to thank you and recognize you for uh, your and your crew. And of course, uh, I know you're very proud of them. Would you like to say a few words for them? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Lee and Vice Mayor Holliver and members of the uh, Millbury City Council, Key Lim Public Works Director. I'd like to say thank you very much. And I, on behalf of our 57 members strong of Public Works Department, thank you. Thank you very much. And we also have something that we'd like to present to the City Council tonight. Every year, the American Public Works Association publish a poster for National Public Works Week, and this year the theme is, it starts here. So we'd like you to have this poster. And on top of that, we are going to be doing a, um, a city picnic uh, next week on Tuesday, and the flyers are here, and it's going to start at 11.30 at the treatment plant. And after the barbecue, the picnic, we're going to be conducting a, uh, a little tour of the uh, treatment plant facilities. And any of you, I would love for you guys to come join us, and I will pass the uh, flyer to Eileen. And also, lastly, we have some really beautiful gifts away for our council members. We have reusable water bottle. And again, I'll pass that out to uh, Eileen. <laughs> Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> um, 
Mr. Mayor? Yes. And we really want to thank you for um, the current work on the um, uh, crosswalks and all of that. Um, it's been, we've gotten a lot of comments from the public uh, about how nice they look now, and hopefully we'll keep our residents safer than ever before. So thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry. The, the tour of the sewage treatment plant, is that just for council members or open to the public? We have also invited the Rotary Club, and I just want to let you guys know that uh, we are now officially proud members of the Rotary Club. A few of us, our city manager Tom Williams, Deanna, and myself. And then we are opening the uh, picnic and the tour to also uh, the Rotary uh, members. And you'll What are you coming up to? Okay, so um, this is, uh, May is the uh, Asian American Pacific Island Heritage Month. And um, it was started in June 1977 by Jimmy Carter. And uh, it started off as uh, Heritage Week, but uh, President Obama uh, has uh, declared it as a uh, month celebration and awareness. And uh, a lot of Asians uh, contribute to the uh, American life. And uh, I like to say that uh, I was born on an army base, so I'm army issued, uh, Asian American. And people ask me where I'm from. I always say I'm from America. So um, I don't. I think that the reason why, and hopefully in, in the future, um, I think it's good to celebrate different cultures because it brings uh, some color into our lives. Um, and I'm hoping that in the future that we may not have to have. Um, these type of awareness, uh, but all just to, but for the fact to celebrate our heritage. And, and these people here who are up here uh, helped us do this just recently at the uh, Chinese or Lunar New Year Festival. They organized this event in three months, which was usually done in eight months. So I just want to thank you, Alice Kwan, Warren, uh, Warren Young, John Chang, and uh, Niwa Ch Chang, right? Thank you very much. So I just also just came from uh, Utah. I uh, went to uh, Promontory Summit, where they celebrated the 150th spike of the Transcontinental Railroad. And for 150 years, the Chinese would never, ever acknowledge as uh, working on that railroad. 12,000 people worked on it. 1,200 of them died building that railroad. Um, they built the hardest, the most difficult part, which was t going through the Sierra. They were dynamited, uh, dynamiting, or not dynamite, they were um, using black powder to, uh, to break up the granite rocks to build tunnels through the Sierra. Um, and they were excluded from the final photo of the Golden Spike. And I just wanted to go, I went there this, yes, uh, on Friday to make up for that. So a lot of us went there to make up for that photo. And um, Elaine Chow, the, uh, the uh, Secretary of, Tra of the uh, Transportation was there to, to uh, make that point. And uh, it wasn't just the Asians who were involved, it was the, the uh, Mormons and in American Indians, uh, ex-Confederate, -conf ex ex-Union uh, workers. Um, and, and notably, uh, and it's still a record, Chinese built uh, 10 miles of track all in 12 hours. And that's still a world's record. So I think that uh, Asians also uh, endure quite a bit of ch uh, challenges, including being excluded because I can't, you know, they were excluded from having homes, they were excluded from having jobs, they were excluded from coming into the uh, United States for the longest time. Um, and uh, I for fortunately started off in California, in fact. Um, but I think uh, we changed that. And I'm hoping that uh, you know it's, it's easy because Asians are easily uh, different in, in looks than, than another population in America. Um, and, and even today, they're still being treated as uh, different. But I think Ameri uh, we uh, Americans, Chinese American, Asian Americans, Japanese American, Korean Americans, uh, we contribute and we like to uh, not just be recognized, but also we just want to show, show that we are Americans and we love our country just as much as anybody else. 
and that uh, if, if you want to know more about that, the 442nd is celebrating their anniversary, and they were the most decorated World War II unit made up of Japanese American, whose families were interned, uh, but they fought for America, and they were the most awarded and decorated unit uh, in the United States history. Um, and, they're so, and they're dwindling down their population. Uh, but they did it with even knowing that their, parent, their family were interned in, in, uh, in, in camps. Uh, and I want to say that the Japanese were the only, but they were, for most part, the largest race uh, and, easy, and easily the most identifiable. So I'm hoping that we don't repeat history. I'm hoping that everybody stands up when we see injustice, when we see people who are uh, at um, particularly like the Muslims are now today, are being targeted. Um, and I'm hoping that we as a country stand up for everybody's rights, uh, whether you be whatever color, creed, or religion that you belong to, that we all know that we all bleed the same color. Um, and also I'd like to announce that the, uh, the Asians in this, not just Asians, but the Asian caucus in San Okay, thank you staff for uh, keeping me on track. So can we, uh, are we up to the agenda now? All right, let's start. All right, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, Tom Williams, City Manager. Um, just a quick uh, briefing of what's going on in the city of Millbrae. Um, every third Friday of the month, uh, it's Millbrae goes to the movies, and so this Friday night, May 17th, it will be showing Incredibles 2 at Central Park. And again, there's game snacks, uh, free screening of Incredibles 2. Uh, the movie uh, takes place outdoors again in Central Park. Um, and it, festivities begin at 6 p.m. with the movie starting at, at uh, sundown. So we hope to see everybody there. We do know that there's rain cast uh, all week starting tonight except for Friday. Um, so we still plan on having the movies. If it's too wet, then we will provide notice on Friday morning, but we're still planning on, on having the movies outdoors. So we hope to see everybody there. Um, also, um, a few Saturdays ago, April 27th, the Millbrae community um, celebrated uh, Arbor Day and Earth Day. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone that showed up. We had about 160 volunteers uh, that planted 20 oak trees along the Spur Trail. We picked up more than 700 pounds of litter uh, and recyclable materials around the city. So we accomplished very much and we thank everyone that um, turned out uh, to volunteer to help beautify the city. Uh, also, um, last Saturday, May 11th, um, we had an incredible uh, bike rodeo um, that was led by our sheriff's department and especially uh, uh, Chief Kunkel um, that, that led in partnership with the CHP, uh, the Millbrae School District, uh, the Lions Club, um, all, all departments. I just I can't thank them enough. Just a great job that they're doing uh, over the last several months. So thank you to all the staff. <clears throat> Also, I um, also thank the staff for um, conducting the uh, Youth Summit, uh, Ability Youth Summit um, in the last few days. Uh, Shelly Ryder, uh, is, with the help of Mackenzie Brady, helped put, to get, put that together quickly um, and with the guidance of Councilwoman Schneider to try to uh, try to win some grants that the county is, is offering. And the youth got together uh, to to brainstorm ideas with the help of staff, um, and staff's going to, it's been phenomenal in that respect. So thank you for the Public Works Department um, and the Recreation Department. And also, again, thanks to the uh, Sheriff's Department. They really stepped up in the uh, bike rodeo and made it a phenomenal uh, community event. Uh, maybe uh, the other cities will start to, uh, will emulate, want to emulate that program. And also kudos to Councilwoman Schneider for uh, pushing for the, the uh, bike rodeo and 
and heading that up as elected. So thank you very much, Councilman Snyder. Can I only add, just because you mentioned it, we had visitors from both South City and San Bruno taking notes. So hopefully we can give them our helpful hints and we pass it forward or pay it forward. Um, Councilman Pappen. And uh, I guess we thank to the Metropolitan Transportation Commission who provided the um, bike, uh, what do you want to call it, bike station where you could get your bike um, evaluated and... Um, Actually repaired and tuned up and... and uh, it, that was, yeah. Yeah, um, tube so replacement, uh, it, that was... It was fantastic. Yeah, we didn't know they sponsored that, but those individuals go around and uh, you can get um, your bike uh, fixed up a bit. So thank that's, you. That's that's not a cheap service too, because uh, I wish I was around, because that's about seventy five dollars. Is it about seventy five? Uh, yeah, that's not cheap. Again, nice job, and thank you, Ms. Schneider, for leading the way on that one. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay, thank you, yeah. Mayor. Um, now moving towards the agenda, uh, quick overview. Uh, item number two is the agenda overview. Um, under that item, we have a calendar of events for information, reports of bills and claims for information. Item number three is approval of the meeting minutes for the regular meeting of April 9th and April 23rd. Uh, there are no oral reports from any city committee or commission chairs this evening. Uh, that we have public communication, and that's for anybody um, of the public that would like to address the city council speaking for three minutes on items not on the agenda. After that, we move to the consent calendar. Item number five is a resolution awarding a construction contract to EPS, doing business as Express Plumbing for the sewer modernization program at Cappuccino High School in the, in the vicinity of Cappuccino High School. That's a sewer upgrade project. Item number six is a resolution accepting replacement of the existing carpet here at the city of Millbrae. Um, as complete and filing a notice of complaint. Item number seven is a resolution awarding construction, uh, a, a construction contract to G. Bortolotto and Company for the 2019 pavement maintenance program. And just real quick on that, that will be done in time for the um, Lions car show. I verified that. Item number eight uh, is adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager designee to execute the first addendum to the agreement for professional services with GHD for on-call engineering services and extend their contract for one year and increase the compensation by an aggregate amount not to exceed $300,000 for fiscal year 2018-19 and fiscal year 19 and 20. Item number nine is a resolution authorizing the city manager designee to execute the first addendum to the agreement for professional services with Beliche and Associates. This is a short highway and Rollins Road pavement repair project. Um, we also will need to increase the budget to a total amount not to exceed 38960 uh, that is from original contract of 118392 to 150352 There was some infrastructure that was found um, underneath the pavement that uh, no one knew about, so that increased the cost. Item number 10 is a uh, considered adoption of a resolution approving the mayor's attendance to the 87th annual meeting of the United States Conference of Mayors on June 28th through July 1st uh, at the request um, of staff and the mayor, that item will be continued. So we're removing it from the agenda this, e this evening and perhaps continuing that to the June 11th um, meeting. So that will not be heard tonight. Moving into public hearings, item number 11. Uh, this is a continuation of the Gateway Millbrae Station area design, uh, their review permit. So we still have some work to do uh, with the applicant on the color for the hotel. Also, uh, we'd like to bring back at the same time the monument sign on Millbrae Avenue and the landscaping of the median. So we still have work to do. So at the request of the applicant, we would like to get that item to June 11th as well. Item number existing business is the Recreation Center uh, restoration project to one, receive the informational update on the um, final Recreation Center uh, first phase of the project and accept the final report. Uh, under new business, um, item 13 is to review and affirm the city's position regarding opposition to Senate Bill 50. This is the uh, Senator Wiener's bill um, on uh, allowing uh, multifamily housing units by right under state law. Um, and usurping local control. After item 13 is council comments. And then adjourning the meeting in memory of several people that we will make comment on. So with that, that's the overview of the agenda this evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Thank you, any questions?
Um, on the continuation of item 11, will we be able to see particularly the signage beforehand? Um, or, you know, as soon as possible on that front, it's concerning to many of us. Uh, yes, council member, we'll have that information in the city council prior to the meeting. Anything else? Okay, so um, on item 10, the mayor's conference thing, um, just for those people who are wondering why we pulled it, it's, it's pretty obvious that uh, the, the uh, cost is eye-popping. Um, but I wanted to make sure that uh, the council heard it because this is not just about this one um, conference. This is about the fact that do we want to participate in future mayor conferences. Um, and the uh, price tag is, uh, there's some things we can do to reduce that, but I think that we want to talk about the value of participating in this. And the reason why is because we had a presentation by staff, uh, Congresswoman Spears' staff about the fact that a lot of cities um, did not know that there were federal grants that, uh, that the cities could take advantage of, and those who are normally discussed at these type of conferences. Um, so, and other cities in the, in the county have recognized that and they're sending their mayors. So that's something we want to talk about. Um, and along those lines too, the um, annual meeting of the United States Conference of Mayors is exceptionally important. Um, I think part of the cost issue too is here, we're not a member. So if we could address that in the future, the cost is reduced if we become a member of this organization. Um, and I know how important these meetings have been in the past um, for many, many different cities. So um, when we look at and evaluate that, um, I'd appreciate finding out what it costs to, for our city to join this conference so that um, any future expenditures are reduced there. Yeah, well, this conference is never going to be cheap because it's always at a um, Class A city and our hotel bills are always high. Um, so it's never going to be cheap, but the question is if it's worth the value to the city, citizens of Millbrae. So, okay, so let's move on to, um, to the um, minutes. And I knew there, was a f there was a change that the vice mayor has pointed out. And with those changes, what, what day was that again? Yeah. That was for April 23rd. It was, there was a reference to the mayor of Malta, and I believe it of Mosta. Right. Like, there's a president of Malta. Age the Chinese-speaking merchants and also the... That letter uh, is from Sammy Yim right. because he is busy in Sampona and gives some scholarship. But because he is a, a commissioner of Sita, Sister City Commission, so he was very strong support and tried to have one unit, easy English, Chinese spelling name. So right. that's he, what he write, but he's not able to present today. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, another was on behalf of uh, uh, Sammy Yim, Commissioner of City, speak on behalf of him. So thank you very much. One more thing. Oh. I'm working, continuing to work very hard as always on the funding ops for the recreation center. So we've summarized for funding in hand as well as commitments. So funds of hoping maybe it was, wow, you didn't have enough natural resources. I'm still going to say when we move or when we're, when I'm being asked to approve the full packet, where you look at the bioswale that we talked about in the study session, and we're going to be grading the ground. It's an opportunity to think about, and I'm forgetting the right word, the underground tanks that store storm water so we don't have sewage overflow or uh, stormwater overflows into the bay. It's an opportunity to put a tank under there as a containment basin. I know it would cost more, but perhaps there's some green infrastructure funding we can get for that aspect of the project. And I just don't want to lose sight of it because my understanding is our heaviest overflow on bad rain days is coming down Tioga, and it's not that difficult to shift that water well, okay, it's a little difficult. Okay, it's a lot difficult to bring it from Tioga or down the hillside view and get that water down so that it doesn't end up in our neighborhoods that would flood. So I just want to keep that idea out there. That's not going to stop me from voting and approving what you're asking tonight. And then my third question, you said we've got two RF request for interest or something. So we, we, we put forward a request for statement of interest. We had two statement responses to that request. So I know that Supervisor Carol Groom has talked about funding to help grow more preschools. So hopefully we've tapped into that grant. 
Funding would not be needed until mid to late 2021. I would imagine that we would need to have that agreement uh, finalized well before that, um, <laughs> before we move on. SB 5330 is even worse. Talked about those sterols that have the, the safe point and the evacuation chairs. Um, and also during normal day to day, um, of course, an elevator. And if for some reason an elevator is out of service, which is not common. And your concern is, is valid. But I think there's ways that we can train people up. And they made me con feel like I could get. Answer. And I, I see that there are questions of the council. So in brief summary, I'd be happy to answer questions and, and provide our staff opinion. Councilman Papin. Yes, this has been quite a topic of discussion. Um, cities throughout San Mateo County uh, have opposed this strongly so. The legislation does not consider intermodal centers such as Milbras, transit um, uh, programs or plans that various city community have had. Um, Mr. Ralph, this is really a time for all communities together. But, uh, South San Francisco and San Bruno both approached an estimated uh, 19, 19 times of uh, return. So, 100 uh, return. So, um, that's awesome. And uh, self help for Lee's having their celebration, the gala on June 14th at the Hyatt. Um, and self help for the elderly, they pretty much uh, provide meals three times a day at the security room at 12 o'clock Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three days a week. Um, and it's free. Uh, it's, well, there's a three dollar suggested donation. There is entertain. Well, there's activities, so the seniors can also socialize and have activities, and also get a uh, nutritious meal. I will not be here on a meeting on the 28th. I'm going to uh, China on my own dime to uh, to to try try to uh, create some trade opportunities and. Uh, and goodwill. So um, I also went to Malta on my own dime. So <laughs> it's a very expensive year for for the mayor. And uh, there is a there is a trip planned to uh, uh, Hanyu, Japan, November ish eighth, ninth, or something like that. And that's going to be on my own dime. <laughs> so um, so uh, I think people just. I think I think I, I, maybe I get my point across. Anyway, um, then on the thirtieth, the uh, Council of Cities, a meeting of all the council members and s mayors of the count of San Mateo County, are we're ho Milbrae's hosting, and uh, oh, thirty-first. Sorry, thirty-first, last day, last Friday in the month, and uh, um, the airport director will be speaking, and uh, I think it'd be unfortunately I won't be there, so the vice mayor, you're going to have to. Uh, uh, I'm just keeping a vice mayor busy. Well, you know, what's the point of having a vice mayor if you're not doing vice mayor stuff? <laughs> so anyway, um, and then uh, finally, as I mentioned before, the San Mateo County uh, Asian Pacific Islander Caucus has formed, and their uh, membership's $50. Their first event will be Ang uh, Angelica's in Redwood City on the 23rd at 6.30, so all are welcome, and hopefully people will come and see what's going on and, and participate. And uh, we're gonna close tonight's meeting on the Zelda Rattenberg? Rattenberg. Rattenberg, uh, Senator Ellen Tesher, um, and a uh, longtime volunteer and senior committee, uh, senior co committee advisory co member, Mary Summers, and- uh, Oh, I hadn't heard. Yeah, she's yeah she's been sick for a little bit, and then also grandson of uh, uh, Teco Lewis and uh, mother I mean son of um, Marsha Marsha Perez was uh, gunned down unexpectedly uh, you know um, in wrong place in the um, wrong time wrong place at a very young age uh, Danello A Kaka, so we just like to we we're we're sorry. Um, and but we do have we're celebrating the hundredth birthday of oh, it was, um, Miss Aba, Abi, Masu Abi is a res, uh, uh, Melbourne resident. So something good to say. All right, so I'm going to close the meeting. Thank you very much.